Like a genie in a bottle. <laughs> Hi Vogue, this is Christina Aguilera and this is my life and looks. Yes, this was where it all started. Introduction to the world at a time where, yes, I was very green and fresh faced. I call her baby Christina, but so excited and grateful to be making a first record. I had all these creative ideas and I just wanted to be very expressive and over the top. And so this was very, you know, playing it safe. I didn't really have any mobility to have a say yet. So I felt very plain, I remember, on this photo shoot, but thankfully looking back, that wouldn't last long. <laughs> okay, she's getting excited now. This is around the time when I started working with Trish Somerville. I had just released Mi Reflejo, my first Spanish Latin album. I was starting to be able to step out of my shell a little bit, experiment with colored streaks in the hair, peekaboo slits and patches of cutout clothing. That was me starting to come into expressing who I was and having a little bit of fun and not feeling so boxed in. The Versace dress, it was so unexpected. I didn't have anything prepared to give a speech or anything. I felt I was just too new to the platform to even be nominated. Best new artist is one you can never win again. So it was extra special. It's so beautiful now to see down the line other incredible women owning this dress and giving it new vision. She was so bold for this one. To this day, when I see this pop up on Memories Throughout the Year interviews, this is one of my favorites. Just because it was so rebellious at the time, I hadn't even done stripped yet, hadn't worn the chaps yet. Joanne Gare did the makeup, such an artist, the way she paints bodies. I was just so into not conforming. I wanted the teased out, sort of over the top look. This looked like it should have been maybe photographed for a magazine or an editorial spread, but it was very much something that at the time would never be accepted on a red carpet, but that was probably part of my love for the rebelliousness of knowing that it offended certain people that were like, how could she? I really wanted to start expressing myself and it was almost my way of visually telling people to back off and I'm gonna do my thing now. I loved embracing these looks for the red carpet and being what people would consider extreme, but to me, it was just completely normal in my mind. I was like, yeah, of course, these go together. Like, we're doing it and it's gonna be fun. Lady Marmalade made this look tame. One of my favorite moments of my career. This is where we stopped apologizing for anything. It was an explosion of everything being at the right place at the right time. I loved these girls and working with them and even seeing what they're doing now is so beautiful when you share something like that and you can look back on such an amazing part of pop culture in that way. I was still transitioning between my initial debut record and everyone sort of thinking I was gonna fit that box or that mold of what the label wanted me to be, but I was starting to come into myself and that would be the gateway to what was to come. You had nods to burlesque, old Hollywood glam. You had all these showgirl aspects and as a performer, I got to just live my best life in this creative world. I was always growing up and doing shows and performing since I was really, really young, which I think also probably had a play on why it was so important to me when I did come of age and I was getting older and could finally have a say in what I was doing, how I was, I was singing, what really influenced me and not be you know, formatted into this stereotypical box of how we should be, especially as females. I think now they call it the hair bra. <laughs> I've heard it being referenced that now. I wanted this album to embrace every different part of being a woman, from feeling empowered and strong, owning my sexuality, and not from what a guy thinks it should be. There's such a rule book that we, you know, need to look a certain way 
on a certain front, act a certain way, be sexy, not too sexy, be be good girl, but not too good, because that's boring. There's such a rule book that's handed to us, and I was given it since I was very, very little. And the older I got, the more I realized you're either going to be a part of the problem or you're gonna stand up against it and create your own story. And that's what Stripped was about. I could get emotional talking about it. I love expressing my sexuality, but I owe no one an explanation about what that, you know, even means to me. I wanted to go against the grain. I wanted to be anti <laughs> what the rule book was and what a pop star should look like and sound like. And I had to take the bullets for it too. <laughs> I definitely had the conservative police come after me a few times. There were a lot of boy bands out at the time. And I remember so many times like, why are they not getting in trouble for this and that and these gestures and this on stage? I didn't even think that it was anything wrong or upsetting. <laughs> or offensive about dirty whatsoever. This was truly me living my best life. We made the micro mini skirt, chrome hearts chains all around my waist. And that was literally a scarf that we were just playing with in the mirror. I just scooped it around my back. Trish pulled it up the sides and I was like, okay, great, we're done, we're going. <laughs> That's the look. Oh. I loved the Versace campaign that I did. Donatella was amazing and so warm to me. I'm a huge makeup fan and I love being over the top and this was the first time, especially in this era, I was okay with stripping it back. Pat McGrath actually did me this day and this morning I woke up, it was like my only day off and in the middle of the strip tour. I'd gone out and celebrated with the dancers the night before and I was so hungover this day. I was beyond and <laughs> I could barely get off the couch and I just remember Pat's energy was so warm and she was just refreshing in like the most chill way though. She made me so comfortable with just putting moisturizer on my face and I went to do like a test shot with my Zell. Then they were just like, no, it's good. We're keeping it. That's the look. And looking back, it was just such a cool, beautiful, different thing and different take on, on beauty for me. <laughs> we are entering the back to basics phase. One thing that's really important to me as an artist was making sure that I really embodied the different chapters in my life. My personal growth and the music that I was listening to at the time or had been influenced by. And that stemmed from throwback music, the visuals of old Hollywood and, you know, depicting characters from Veronica Lake to Marilyn Monroe to Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughn, Ella Fitzgerald. These were the makers and creators of blues, jazz, and soul music that truly inspired me from a young age that I had to sort of silence about myself whenever I got my record deal because I couldn't sing a certain way. You know, don't do that, don't ad lib, that's too much. We don't do that in pop music. So I had to sort of really minimalize what I wanted to do creatively to appease everybody. I was on the way to, I think, a tour show and I went nowhere without a red lip at the time. <laughs> So this was a full circle moment. I won for Ain't No Other Man here. I also had a huge performance this night. It was my performance of It's a Man's World. All the looks from this night definitely had an old Hollywood glam sort of throwback look from this acceptance dress to I wore for the James Brown tribute performance an all white suit. I like giving the theme for the music that it represents. Burlesque. I love this green dress. I thought it was such a beautiful look and in such a vulnerable song. I was going through such an emotional, personal day on this day. So I really poured my heart out, everything I was feeling in my day into the performance of this song. Christopher Buckle and I embraced doing this movie at the time. Christopher was my makeup artist for Back to Basics and he just nailed the glam look. Oh my God, but I remember the flower being like a thing. I really wanted the flower. I had to fight so hard to put that flower in my hair, but Christopher had my back. We fought for it and we got it.
<laughs> I was so excited to collaborate. One of my favorite collaborators is Mel Ottenberg. He literally brought back my chaps idea, except he made me a crystallized thong under tuxedo pant chaps. He always sort of comes up with something really different and unexpected, and so I was going to do Gay Pride, Lady Lynn, New York City. What better way to do it than to show up as the Statue of Liberty <laughs> and be so tongue in cheek, so campy. We literally had so much fun playing up to this like camp fun idea and where better than to do it, New York City Gay Pride. So that was my life and looks. Thank you so much for helping me go down memory lane. This has been so much fun and hope to do it in the next 20 some years. Mwah.